Okay, so I'm going to call this um, uh, urn problem number two. Uh, we're going to picture uh, an urn, or you can think of it as a box, uh, just like I've drawn um, here. And this time there are, uh, you know, n marbles of different uh, colors that I'm going to uh, that I'm going to put in the urn. So the, there are n marbles with uh, n distinct uh, colors, right? Each uh, marble has its own color, and because I don't have uh, different colors of chalk, I just um, just labeled them, uh, you know, colors one through through seven. Right? And we're going to think of the following uh, stochastic process. So we're going to pick a marble right, uniformly at random. All choices are equally likely. I'm going to take a marble. I'm going to look at its color. And I'm going to write down uh, uh, that color, put the marble back in the box, and, and keep going, right? So, you know, on one hand, I have this sheet of paper, right, this list where, you know, I write down all the colors that I've seen, you know, red, green, blue, maybe red again, yellow, you know, yellow again, red, and so on and so forth, right? So it's going to be a growing list that each time step I'll write down a color. And on the other hand, there is this box out of which uh, you, every single time through this process, I'm going to pick a marble, place it back, right? So nothing really changes in terms of the box at each time step, but uh, on my sheet of paper here, there's gonna be gr this growing list of uh, colors. And we're gonna finally let XK denote the number of distinct colors um, up to and including uh, time uh, time K, right? So, so you could ask, for example, what's X0? X0 is uh, should be equal to zero because we haven't picked uh, any colors yet, right? And then, you know, uh, soon after we'll see you know some of these colors pop up and you know, kind of the key sort of observation here is that you know even if uh, one of these colors uh, say red you know gets written down on my piece of paper many many times like let's say maybe uh, you know 10 times it only counts once as far as this XK is concerned because um, you know I'm writing down distinct colors so you know that that's the problem and you kind of you know you just have to kind of sit there and um, you know start sort of digesting it you know, if this is an exam problem, certainly you kind of to step back and think through it, sort of what 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 all this means. But you know, our goal in the end uh, with all these problems is to get used to uh, this first step transition analysis and applying it to to compute the expected uh, value of of some process at time k. So we're after uh, computing the expected value of x k, right? The expected number of distinct colors seen by time k, and including right, time k. So before jumping into this expectation uh, uh, calculation, let's uh, you know the, the the suggestion is basically you know let's start exploring the problem in terms of the, the state space, in terms of the sample space, in terms of the, the transitions. Uh, get a little bit of a feel for how it proceeds, you know, from from time zero to time one to time two. So let, let's do a little bit of this exploration, and then you know hopefully we'll we'll kind of. Uh, develop enough uh, intuition to then to then crunch through the, the expectation. So you know what's the state space, right? The state space, right? Remind yourself, it's it's the the, the set of values that this uh, process uh, assumes. So we're looking for a set S that enumerates all the possible values that um, x k could could assume. So you know, I, we already said that uh, we could see zero colors, right? The, at the very beginning, we've, we haven't seen any colors, so zero is certainly part of the state space. We could see one color, we could see two, right? And you kind of keep counting like this, and, and so you know, what's the, the maximum number of colors we could see? Well, that's the maximum that that's in the box. In this case, seven. In general, n. And so it seems to me that the the state space is just all integers from from zero to um, to n. So let me write that down. So the state space is labeled with, or at least I label with the letter N. And here it is. All right, this is uh, the, the values, right, the set of possible values that the, the process uh, XK uh, will uh, assume values in. Uh, the next thing, let's, you know, we could discuss a little bit the, the sample space, right? So XK is something that's hopefully a random variable. It certainly looks like it has a random nature to it, right? So we could try to think about, you know, what could a plausible uh, sample space be here, right? So xk, the random variable, is a function from the sample space to the state space. So let's discuss what it is. So far in sort of our uh, examples that we've looked at, we've seen something like this be a pretty good uh, guess. Let's see if that works, right? So what does it mean for this to work? 
well you kind of have to encode right the, the state of state of the system right so you know these are all strings of zeros and ones and and what if we say oh look we're gonna put in a one for a color that we've seen before right that that could work right so you know a zero means that we haven't picked that color a one means that that we have so so let's go with that right and um you know if we do go with that then omega which is an element of this right uh, sample space right is again written as this string of um of zeros and ones and you know i have omega i is either zero or one and it will be one when color i has uh, has been picked um and then it looks like once again we have the same exact random variable popping up um right if i just sum up from i equals one to n omega i what have i done right i've some I've added exactly one for a color that I've seen and I've added exactly zero for the color that I haven't and that seems to me to be the, the number of distinct uh, distinct colors right um, and so that seems to work let me give you an example of of, um, of a sample space that um, that maybe doesn't have this this structure right to get something that looks a little bit different let me suggest this how about I write um, with this notation to represent, oh, not here. Uh, I'm gonna write. I'm gonna use this notation here to represent all strings of length n with integer uh, values. So this is a n. This is a number of marbles. Again, I have an element of omega that's in this form. All right, and now each omega i is an element of natural numbers. Right. So this is just the set. Uh, 0, 1, 2, uh, 2, right, and so on and so forth, right? So this is just all the natural numbers. So what could, what could this represent? Well, you know, one could, um, one could think of um, the meaning of this could be that uh, omega i being some number says exactly how many times uh, each color was picked. Right, or how, how many times this number was, uh, was what the color i was seen, right? So if uh, omega i is equal to three, right, that means that color i has been so far, right, uh, picked, uh, selected out of this box uh, three times, right? And then this changes, right? With this uh, sample space, you don't, mm, oh, you know, you don't have the same representation of the random variable anymore. You have omega here. And I'm gonna again go with the sum, but how about now I write the indicator of omega i greater than or equal to one in here. All right, so, so let's see how that works. Uh, each omega i is gonna be, you know, at least one if I've seen it, or it could be larger. And so in the sum, I wanna still uh, add up, uh, you know, I wanna still collect only a one one for a color that, that I've seen and a zero for if I haven't seen it. And as far as this random variable is concerned, you know, I don't really care how many times I've seen the color red, right? So that's gonna be an indicator when the color I has been uh, seen at least once, add a one, otherwise add a zero and sum up over n uh, colors, right? So same thing, but you know, you kind of see that there's not, not one single right answer for this sample space. It really depends, right? And you know, the difference would be that on this sample space, I may not be able to to uh, generate uh, all the you know some particular random variable that uh, that uh, that's of interest, right? So sample some sample spaces would, would work for some problems better than, than for others. So the, you know once you kind of get a handle on this, right? You kind of have a handle on the on the random variable. You have a handle on the state space. You know we're beginning to see kind of what what's going on here. Let's. The next suggestion is basically let's write down, uh, you know, how, how does the process b behave at least early on for, for time steps k0, k1, k2. So the, the claim is again that x0, I mean, it looks like it's, it's just 0, right? We've already said it. 
x0 is, is 0 for the simple reason that we haven't seen any colors at time 0. x1 is got to be 1 then, because, you know, I've had this one opportunity to pick a color, I picked exactly 1, and so we, we saw a distinct color. We haven't seen any colors previously, we had to see one distinct one. x2, here we're starting to get a little bit more randomness. Right. If I had picked uh, the color red, and I picked it, just happened to have picked it again on, on the second time step here, then I stayed at 1. Right. I've only seen red. But if I picked, say, green, then I would have seen two distinct colors, red and green. Right. And so now the question is, like, with what probability do these things happen? Right. And so maybe you can kind of pause the video and think for yourself, but maybe... Then altogether, we could skip to to the general case, just that we're maybe feeling a bit ambitious, or in the case where you realize that there's, um, there's clearly some kind of connection or similarity between this and the previous problem. Let's just try to skip ahead and see if you know we're in a state x, and we're going to try to list uh, an arbitrary number of transitions. You know, trying to list all the transitions. So what's little x? Little x is telling you that uh, that we've seen um, exactly x uh, distinct colors by now, and it's asking at the next time step, what are you, what are you gonna you know what's gonna happen? So one thing that could happen is you could not see a new color. You could just see a color you've already seen, right? And you know, write it down on a piece of, on the piece of paper, but you haven't actually seen a new one. And so clearly this is a transition. And I'm also gonna claim this. There's got to be a, another transition. Right, because, um, you know, like we picked green in, in a little bit ago, right, having only seen red, and so, the, you know, if we've seen X colors, right, clearly this, this would be the case. The only time, I guess, when this isn't the case, right, this is perhaps um, maybe the only time this is not the case when X is already um, uh, equal to, you know, N, if we'd seen all of them. That's the only time where this is not really a valid transition. So I guess you could say, you know, for x less than n, right? This would certainly be the case, right? But this transition is always valid, except maybe when it's 0, right? So for x does not equal to 0, right? So, you know, there's always kind of some, some of these caveats, but, you know, we, we have a good sense um, of, of what the transitions are at this point. Uh, clearly, you're not going to transition to x plus 2. You can't see two colors, uh, two distinct colors all, you know, in one turn. And now let's, I guess we could list the probabilities with which this happens. So, you know, remember like what these two cases are, but uh, let's see what the probabilities turn out to be. And here you kind of have to think through what, what are the events that, that are happening. Right? So in the case when we transition from x to x, what must have happened? Well, I must have picked a color that, that, that I've already seen before. How many distinct ones have I seen before? I've seen X distinct before. So what's my probability that I picked this, the, you know, that I hit the same one? It's going to be X over N. And what's interesting is that that little corner case that we mentioned, right, zero, um, you know, it kind of takes care of itself, right? When X is zero, the probability of transitioning from zero to zero all of a sudden jumps to zero. So it kind of just like takes care, uh, you know, of its own, um, of its own fate. And now you want to list the, uh, the, the second probability, right? This is the probability that we've actually uh, seen uh, a new color. You know already that it's got to be one minus x over n, just based on the fact that there are only two possibilities here, and probability is always sum to one. But let's think through the actual event. The event must be that we picked a color that we haven't seen before. How many have we seen? We've seen x. How many haven't we seen? N minus one. How many total are there? Uh, the, totally, there are uh, there are n of them, and so this right here, right? Not surprisingly, would be the probability that we. Uh, hit a new color and add a new distinct uh, color to our uh, list of list of all colors. So, you know, at this point we can essentially stop, right? If you remember the last clip well, um, we just obtained the same exact transition probabilities as in the previous problem. Uh, this may seem surprising, but 
but you know that that that's what it is, right? So the the previous problem was um, having to deal with. Um, what it was uh, what was the, the previous problem was about uh, marking the marbles right it was sort of you pick the the marble and you mark it and then you put it back in the box and then you're recording how many more marks so there we didn't even have colors it, it's just seemed to be kind of different right but the mathematics appear to be exactly the same right so this XK variable turns out to be the same exact in this case Markov chain right we argue that the other uh, um, example it turned out to be a process that was a Markov chain here we have the same exact transitions with the same exact probabilities meaning that this is also right this XK is also a, a, a Markov chain and so what else is there to say well the the first tra step transition analysis is then exactly the same you have the exact same formula and you have two problems that in at least as far as playing words were you know seem to be very different but are but are very much uh, identical mathematically. Um, this is, in fact, I'll mention, I guess, one more thing before we wrap up on this clip. Uh, I'll mention the this is, uh, in fact, called, I mean, it's a famous problem. It's called the, the coupon collecting problem. And this appears in Ross uh, chapter 5, which is on the Poisson process. But this, you know, here exam is example 5.17. If you read this, um, you'll see that it's, uh, the very same chain that's being described, but he's solving something a, a little bit different, right? So here there are coupons and uh, they're being uh, collected and um, uh, here he's kind of looking for an expectation of this random variable n, which is the, um, uh, the number of coupons one needs to collect uh, in order to have a complete collection of at least one of each type. Right, so uh, I would definitely encourage you to read this. We'll come back to it um, in a future section. It uses some tools from continuous time Markov chains. Um, and so uh, we'll come that back to it again. But that essentially wraps up uh, this example, and we'll move, we'll move on to another one in the, in the next clip.